In today's budget brawl, we have four bonded bourbons going head to head. In the first corner, our reigning champion coming in at $24, Old Granddad Bonded. In the second corner, our current runner up coming in at $22, Old Tub. In the third corner, coming in at $17, Evan Williams Bottled and Bond. And finally, in the fourth corner, coming in at $20, Benchmark Bonded. By their nature of being bottled and bond, all of today's competitors are at least four years old, only contain bourbon from one distillation season, and are bottled at 100 proof. Do these challengers have what it takes to go up against the reigning champions? Let's brawl! Thanks, Joyce. As always, we're going to start with glass A, go to glass D, take a small break, go back glasses D through A, and tally our scores and let you know which one we think comes out on top. So we're going to dive right in to glass A. That smells like bourbon. Sure does. High ethanol bourbon. Well, these all are 100 proof. These are our first whiskeys of the day. So A, because it's the first whiskey, is definitely not going to have A's many notes. But when we come back to it, round two, we'll definitely have probably way more things to say about it. But I think, you know, brown sugar, oak, it was oily, kind of thick. My first sip just wasn't big enough. Yeah, there's some good mouthfeel there. Pecan and maple. Some nice cinnamon and sweetness. Oh, that just came off very oily to me. I'm enjoying it. Coated my tongue very well. Dive into B. Dive into B. This one's got a funk. I was going to say the same thing. Good funk or a bad funk? Good funk. You uh, you let me know. I think it's a good funk. Sawdust. I can see that. Like Almost like a wet sawdust. I can definitely see that, yeah. It doesn't last on the nose, though. Like, after a few whiffs, it's kind of like, I'm past that, I'm getting up other aromas. I mean, the oak still stays there, so that, that wood presence is still yes. there. But, yeah, I know what you mean. It's not as funky. It's not as overpowering. And I also don't know that the funk really carries over to the palate. I mean, I thought it was a good funk, so I was hoping it would carry over. There's definitely still a funk there. I, I'm not getting it. Oh, very sweet on very, the palate. Very spicy. Uh, getting up wet grass. If you watch our last budget brawl, we had early times Bald the Bond also in that lineup. And we were going to continue that going forward to put that one in the next round, this round. We did not continue with that because that bottling was the Brown Foreman bottling. Sazark has since bought early times Bald the Bond. And so we did not include that bottle in our lineup today. Once we get our hands on the new bottling from Sazerac, we will probably consider it if we can find it. All right, glass C. Ooh, this, that's sweeter. This is sweeter and more floral and like, it's, it's prettier. Yeah, it's it's more floral and more fruity. Juicy. No. Mm -hmm. For once, I could see juicy fruit. Juicy. I don't think juicy fruit. I just, I just think it's a juicy fruit. It's a fruit that no, is juicy. No, for once, I'm getting that juicy fruit note. I mean, I also haven't had juicy fruit gum in years. Maybe I am, I just don't remember. And very, very dark brown sugar. Very molasses. <clears throat> this one's really good on the nose. Yeah, no, I like this one a lot in the nose. I do like this one a lot in the nose. It's not overpowering. It's just very sweet, pretty, delicate. Ooh, very good on the palate as well. It leaves a bitterness on my tongue that I do not like. I'm but, getting that bitterness, but I don't mind it. Uh, then you go looking for that bitterness. It's like a bitter, fi bitter finish that like, just like kind of holds on your tongue. I can see it. I can see the bitter. I don't hate it. Okay. Yeah. It, it's very present to me and I'm not... Like the, the initial sip, I was like, oh, okay, uh-huh, uh-huh. And then that bitterness settled in. I was like, ah. Mm. That bitterness is turning into a peanut finish for me. The tannins of the peanut shells. I was going to say like that that papery layer that surrounds the peanut between the shell. I was going to say like, uh, like the peanutty dust. Yeah. yeah. I could see. On to glass D. This one's got a, like a, almost like a peanut butter toffee in it. Like it smells a little thicker, but not as heavy. I like the nose. I do like the nose. It's... I'm not getting peanut butter toffee. I think the nose is very similar to C, just softer and more subtle. I don't think this is a, as floral and as pretty as C. Yeah, see, I think this is more oaky. It's still sweet. It's like a sweet oak. Yeah, no. There's definitely a sweetness like a sugary, about it. sugary, brown sugary oak. I like the palette. I do like that palette. I don't like the finish. 
The finish is fine. I like this finish better than C's. Nope. On I this. like C's finish better than that. I think that's the worst finish so far. I would put C's finish as the worst. But See, it, I thought C's finish was the best. So uh, we might have some <laughs> fun here. I will say that I'm getting like different ones that definitely have things that they're stronger at. I can definitely tell that already. Like C's nose for me was amazing. D's nose was good, but I really like the palette. The finish was eh. B and A, actually, I guess we're mostly just mediocre across the board. Right. I do think that they will benefit from the second time through because, yeah. like you said at the beginning, it was our first whiskey of the day. At that time on the finish, I got some sort of uh, dark fruit, like a raisin or a dried cranberry. It's definitely a darker presence on the palate mm -hmm. on the finish. C's, I'd say, it was a little bit lighter. D's is definitely a little more oaky heaviness. I mean, not like a sweet raisin, like a sour raisin. Like if you had raisin flavored Sour Patch Kids. So that's glasses A through D. We're gonna take a small break and let our palettes reset and go D through A, and then we'll break off. While we do that though, you wanna go ahead and leave a comment down below on which whiskey you think is gonna win this brawl. And while you're down there, check out our links and check out our new webpage. All right, let's go ahead and do this. Glasses D through A. Glass D. Dusty Oak. Cocoa and like liquid caramel, like a car caramel bar. Yeah, I can see that. I can see like a chocolate caramel. I can see it. I don't necessarily agree. I definitely see the cocoa. I do. I, I'm getting more like a, a dark chocolate. I don't know if I want to go Maybe dark. a dark chocolate almond. This time that one came across as way more spicy. I do see that raisin or plum note you were getting before. Like I said, it's not like a really, really sweet raisin. I think I liked it this time much more than I did last time. Yes. I do agree with that, yeah. The finish was not as offensive to me this time. I'm hoping that's true for C2. We will see. Classy. 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 It's still bright. It's not as bright. It's not as bright. It's not as floral. It's not as pretty, but still like... It still definitely is on that end of the spectrum. It just has moved. See, I'm actually more. picking up more of the floral nose this time than I was the first time. I'm getting like peanut brittle. I can see that. Not necessarily the peanut in it, but like the, you know, the stuff, that, the brittle, the brittle part. Mm -hmm. Okay, or like a cherry blossom? Cherry or orange blossom? Or yeah, maybe. Oh, see, that finish actually turned the opposite way. It got worse for me. It got better for me. It's not as bitter. But I don't think I enjoy the bitterness this time around. But I'd say that juicy fruit gum is definitely more of like a Fruit Loop cereal. Usually when it's a juicy fruit nose, I'm not a big fan. All right, ready for glass B? That sawdust note's still here, but I'm not enjoying it as much this time. It's much more faint. See, I'm I'm still getting the sawdust note. It's just not like wet, damp sawdust. Now it's like a nice, fresh, almost like the saw just turned off. I still that find that very to be- oaky. It is but I still find that to be the best mouthfeel. I'm still getting- Better that. than A? You know, as far as mouthfeels go, I do think you're right. Usually when we do a review, we don't focus much on the finish. I feel like I'm actually focusing on the finish more than I'm focusing on the palette for these. I'm still focusing on the palette more. The palette's still my number one thing. It has to have a good palette. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yes, yes, like yes. It. But I am focusing more on the finish than I normally do. No palette for me is standing out. Oh, see, I think the palettes are all very different. They are different. They're I not... haven't found any of them to be like atrocious so far. Oh yeah. The, yeah. Like I would not turn a single one of these down. All right, let's go ahead and go into glass A. Yeah. And we'll uh, go from there. The nose is much better this time. Right? Yeah, the nose is much better this time. I'm having a hard time getting a nose. Vanilla, peaches and cream. I'm getting like a cherry vanilla. Peach or an apricot. I'm getting like an apricot, cherry, vanilla, a hint of brown sugar. Yes. Actually, even I can get apricot and I never say apricot. Ooh, peach cobbler. The mouthfeel on that one is really good as well. Yes. Yes. So that was our quick thoughts on glasses A through D. We're gonna go ahead and spend some time by ourselves, going through these whiskeys, putting them back to back, putting them in order and figuring out which ones are our favorites and we'll come back with results. Okay, so we're back. Um, this was a hard process. We actually went through it once, had scores that were way too close. And so we individually went back again, threw everything, kind of sat, let everything sit a little bit. We even added water, which you don't usually do in our brawls. Uh, at the end of all this, last place is D. 
take a look at our results paper. Glass D is Old Tub, which was our reigning runner up. It's getting last this brawl. So challengers are putting in a bigger fight than maybe we thought they would. Third place is Glass C. Glass C is Old Granddad Bonded. Wow. That's which was our reigning champion. Which was our reigning champion. I wow, had these challengers. Yeah. I had Glass C in third. Uh, I had it in second. I had it in last. Yeah. So it's obviously a, a lot of variety here, a lot of different changes. This is a close one, just like it was last time. Glass A comes in second for us. Again, I had it in first. I had it in first. And I had it in last. Again, like, what are you going to do? Glass A was benchmark, which means glass B was Evan Williams, Balton Bond. I can agree with these results, especially since I said at the beginning, Evan Williams was going to win. I would not deny any one of these bottles off of, off of my shelf. Oh, no. No. Absolutely not. No, these are all great. Yes. So according to our community poll, uh, this Evan Williams was the expected winner from this brawl. Old Granddad was expected to get second, essentially, based around the poll, uh, with Old Tub in third and then Benchmark actually in last. However, I think Benchmark is an unknown quantity because not many people have access to it. There's only so many states currently that have access to it. Hopefully that opens up. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep Old Granddad around, though, uh, just in case for some reason you know, the Benchmark doesn't hold up to testing. We need a second place bottle. So, but we'll keep that there. Price-wise... Evan Williams is the cheapest bottle of this lineup. People have been saying it for years. Evan Williams Ball and Bond is a solid bourbon that you need to have in your collection. And it's just a good bang for your buck. We actually liked it in our blind review, which I think is like one of the few of these bottles we actually liked, like heavily liked in our review. I think we generally gave Old Tub and Old Granddad fairly decent. They're okay. I think we gave them all decent reviews. Decent, yeah, like, fine. Decent. Not outside right. the bell curve. Right. right, okay. Evan Williams was outside the bell curve. Yes. All right, so as per always, we're going to go ahead and mix all of these up and give our toast. Oh, wait, I still have to put the bottle on top of the shelves. That's the results. If you disagree with them, leave a comment down below. And until next time, may the winds of fortune sail you. May you sail a gentle sea. May it always be the other guy who says, This, this drink's on me. me.